Last week I did a video on the channel where I re-watched Kell Brook versus Earl Spence and I had a look back at that fight. I kind of came to the conclusion um, throughout that video that because of the manner of the stoppage in that fight, um, it had left me with a perhaps unfair impression of what actually went on in the early and middle rounds. And for me it was a good refresher to go back, watch that fight and re-familiarise myself with some of the action that took place ahead of the stoppage. Um, in that video I talked about the common phrase in boxing that KOs or knockouts cause amnesia and I said that I myself was potentially guilty of falling for that trap, um, especially in the Carol Brook versus Errol Spence fight. I kind of speculated that because of the nature of the Brook Spence stoppage, I kind of remembered the fight as Errol Spence smashing Kell Brook, um, whereas having really watched it, I refamiliarised myself with the big moments of success that Kell Brook did enjoy in that matchup and perhaps taught myself not to write. Um, Kell Brook off going forward. If you're interested, that video is up on the channel. Um, it was uploaded a few days ago and you can obviously go and check that out and hear a much longer discussion on that piece. But it got me thinking whether there were potential other fights to rewatch and other examples where KOs cause amnesia and where there could be something gained by rewatching a fight to re-familiarise yourself with the action prior to the stoppage. And the fight that stood out as the best matchup to do was David Hay versus Tony Bellier. There's two reasons why. Firstly, the guys are rematching um, in May 2018. I know some people are sceptical that the fight will happen, but I do think it will happen. Um, so, you know, when you've got a big rematch happening, it's always good to look back at the first fight and see if any clues or evidence can be taken from that first fight to inform um, predictions, picks, betting decisions, whatever, for the second fight. Um, so that was reason number one, is because of the rematch. Reason number two is I think the stoppage from that fight is memorable. I think a lot of us, including myself, kind of have the picture of an old, ragged, injured David Hay hobbling around the ring on one leg and, um, you know, really getting beaten up and stopped. And, you know, it's another one where, having rewatched that fight, I am now questioning some of the memories the the overriding memories that i have so yeah th those are the two reasons really one i'm thinking uh it's good to rewatch it anyway ahead of the rematch and two i'm thinking the nature of the stoppage may give an unfair impression so we say of the full context of what happened in the ring that night so i've rewatched the fight uh rewatched it last weekend actually and wanted to talk through a few thoughts that I had on it um, and initially we're going to start by breaking it down on a round by round basis. Round one, Hay comes out, for me he immediately looks heavy, it looks like his feet are planted a bit more. This is not the David Hay of old, this is not the David Hay who fought Vladimir Klitschko. Dependent on how charitable you're feeling you could say that this is a David Hay who's got too old, too heavy, too inactive or perhaps you could say this is a David Hay whose game has evolved and adapted over the years with time, with age, etc. But regardless, David Hay is not impressive in the first round. He's, as I say, he's a bit heavy on his feet. He's a bit stationary. This is not the David Hay who used to dance around the ring on his toes, showing lateral movement. This is not the, the light, explosive David Hay who used to go in and out of range. This is a guy who's, you know, standing at three quarter or standing at full distance range, working the jab, planting his feet. He looks off balance to me. He looks wild. He looks falling in behind shots. You know, you see that a number of times. Think of the David Hay as old. He'd be standing at distance from outside the pocket. He would explode in with a huge power punch and then be out of there. Like an ambush, like an explosion. In, out. This David Hay, he swings wildly with a big hook. He misses, but he's committed to the punch. He falls in behind it. His momentum carries him forward. He's a lot easier to counter punch. He's falling in behind shots rather than escaping. He's slower, he's heavier, he's more plodding. Um, at the time, watching the fight, I was amazed at what I was seeing. I thought David Hay is past it. I thought David Hay has lost a step. I thought David Hay has lost 10 steps, in fact. I thought maybe he's too old. Um, Tony Bellew, for what it's worth, possibly wins the first round. In fact, on my scorecard, I give the first round to Tony Bellew. 
Hay is the guy pushing the pace in that first round. Hay is the aggressor. Hay is the guy throwing the heavier lever. But Belly's keeping reins well. He's evading well. He's countering well. He's on the back foot. But he's timing David Hay surprisingly well. I mean, in what is a close round, I score it to Tony Belly. Um, it's interesting. Now, rounds two, three, four, and five, we're going to handle in one block. For me, two, three, and four are very, very clear David Hay rounds. Five is a closer round. Five, two, three, and four are quite dull rounds. Five heats up a bit. All of them are David Hay rounds. And for me, in order to keep this video a respectable length of shortness, I'm going to summarise and say all four of these rounds, David Hay is the aggressor. David Hay is looking to come forward. He's looking to close down the range. He's looking to get his jab going. He's looking to get his work off on Tony Bellew. Bellew, who is still having a level of success with keeping distance, with evading shots, with timing David Hay, um, essentially is adopting a back foot evasive game. I'm not going to say Tony Bellew is necessarily scared of David Hay's punching power. What I will say is Tony Bellew is extremely respectful of David Hay's punching power. And for me, Tony Bellew in this block of four rounds looks like a guy for the majority of this period who is liking, looking to avoid getting caught. His output is very low. He's not, for the most part, looking to dominate rounds. He's not necessarily looking to take the fight to David Hay. He's more conscious, to my eye, of not getting caught. Perhaps he suspected that David Hay's body was going to break down. Perhaps he wanted to test David Hay's long question stamina and drag him into the deep, take him to the later rounds. I'm not saying this wasn't tactics from Tony Bellew. If it was tactics, it worked brilliantly. Congratulations to him. Two to five, for me, are all David Hay rounds. Uh, two, three, and four, I would say, very, very clear David Hay rounds. So after five rounds, I've got David Hay 4-1 up. Um, the first round and the fifth round are close, but I think first is a belly round, fifth is a hay round. But I've got David Hay clearly up, four rounds up, and I think the momentum at this point in the fight is probably with Hay. Um, Bellew hasn't landed a punch of note. He, he's timed David Hay a few times, but he's never troubled David Hay. Um, and for me, Bellew is kind of in a sort of low output, evasive mode after five rounds. Now, round six is where the world changes. Uh, as is well known in the history books right now, David Hay aggravates the Achilles injury. Uh, we now know, well, we knew at the time that there had been substantial reports in the newspapers and in the media that David Hay suffered an Achilles injury uh, in the lead up to this fight. It looks like that injury was aggravated in round six. David Hay goes down. Tony Bellew picks up round six in a 10-8 round. Um, after the injury... Both guys go to war, but David Hay is massively on uh, unsteady legs because of the Achilles injury. He's massively off balance, he's swinging, he's inaccurate, and Bellew goes for the kill. What I would say is whilst round six is a dominant Tony Bellew round, um, Bellew doesn't overly impress me in this round. Number one, he completely abandons his defence and almost gets caught on several occasions in his efforts to get rid of David Hay. Uh, and number two... He's not very clinical with the way he tries to get Hay out of there. You know, it almost reminds me of the 11th and 12th round in that Bellew Cleverly rematch where Cleverly was up against the ropes doing nothing and Bellew smothered his work and couldn't really take his opponent out. You know, you don't see too much construction behind Bellew's work. You don't see him jabbing to create an opening in. You don't see him putting combinations together, changing levels. You know, a lot of the time you just see him swinging for the fences and even a David Hay on one leg is able to, to make him miss of it. But regardless, whilst Tony Bellew left himself open, whilst he couldn't find the tools at round six um, to get David Hay out of there, it is doubtlessly a dominant Tony Bellew round. And the pattern continues in round seven. Um, you know, Tony Bellew, complete dominance, David Hay looking like he is completely immobile. Bellew all over him. Um, it does appear to my eye that Tony Bellew didn't necessarily have the punching power to hurt David Hay. Um, it did appear that at this point, Tony Bellew was struggling to close the show and get his opponent out of there. But nevertheless, you know, complete dominance. And the theme is an injured man trying to not lose his balance and get knocked over. Round eight and nine are very, very interesting rounds. Bizarrely, and completely against a run of play, 
David Hay comes out and starts to push the pace again in round eight. He's on completely unsteady legs. He's not got his balance. The injury is clearly affecting him. Yet David Hay comes out, looks to go forward, and looks to bring the fight to Tony Bellew. Um, you actually look at a totally immobile David Hay trying to walk his opponent down. You know, Tony Bellew, there's a good, you know, there's an interesting moment in the fight where Tony Bellew throws four, five, six jabs at David Hay. And as David Hay is coming forward, you know, hobbling forward, Hay's still got the head movement to make Bellew miss and the jabs come up short. Eight and nine are competitive, competitive rounds, which are easy to forget when you think back to the stoppage. You know, eight and nine, I actually scored eight Tony Bellew by a whisker. But I scored nine to David Hay, I think. It's very possible to give round nine to David Hay. As David Hay, to me, so huge heart, huge grit, huge determination to come on and keep throwing punches and, and not give in. Now, rounds 10 and 11 are where Bellew closes the show. Maybe he punched himself out in round six and seven, trying to uh, get David Hay out of there. Maybe he needed a round or two to recover. And maybe that's what happened in eight and nine. I punched out Tony Bellew, uh, took a round or two off, and that's why David Hay became more competitive, even though he was semi-immobile in those rounds. Rounds 10 and 11, Tony Bellew started getting his work off again, started reasserting that dominance. And as we now know, by the time round 11 came, uh, unfortunately, David Hay um, was stopped and the fight was the fight was over. Um, but it's interesting. It's interesting. It's another one of these fights where I do wonder if the phrase knockouts cause amnesia is applicable. Um, because my instant thoughts prior to re-watching this fight is David Hay's body fell to pieces and um, you know Tony Belly was able to stop it. Whereas, looking back on it, I think there's two important points to be made. Point number one is that prior to the injury being aggravated in round six, David Hay was well up, 4-1 on my scorecards, and to all intents and purposes, looking like the better man on the night, in my opinion. Number two is even after the injury, um, whilst David Hay suffered some very, very difficult moments in six and seven, he was still able to put something of an offence and defence together in round eight and nine and actually make those fights compet uh, those rounds competitive enough. This video isn't meant to discredit Tony Bellew. Tony Bellew has always been someone I've had a bit of a blind spot to. You know, I don't see in Bellew's game how he is successful, as successful as he is. Maybe he's been well placed, maybe he's taken the right fights at the right time, or Maybe he's just a far better fighter than I give him credit for. I've got to say that all of those are possibilities. And Bellew does deserve credit for this fight. He showed chin. He showed determination. He showed heart. He showed improved movement. He showed good tactical mouse. Um, he showed good timing as well. You know, Bellew deserves a lot of credit for this performance. Don't get me wrong. But having rewatched the fight, number one, who amongst us would pick Tony Bellew to win that fight after five rounds prior to David Hay aggravating that injury? That's a serious question. Let me know your responses to that in the comments section below. Perhaps most importantly, having rewatched the fight, I'm kind of left with this. My initial thought was we went from watching a bad David Hay in round one to an injured David Hay in round six. Maybe looking back on it, I'm now inclined to say we went from watching an injured David Hay in round one to a horrifically injured David Hay in round six. You know, I think back to this. I remember doing a video about it on the time on the channel. I remember thinking back to it and thinking, um, you know, David Hay was potentially carrying an injury into the fight. That's what the reports were in the lead up. You look back at that round one. You look at how off balance he is. You look at how wild he is, how he falls in behind shots. You know, how he's swinging and missing. I appreciate David Hay has got older. I appreciate David Hay has got heavier. I appreciate David Hay hasn't fought a meaningful fight prior to this one since Derek Chisora. But I just wonder, was the result of David Hay being so off colour in terms of his timing, in terms of his movement, was that result a result of the Achilles injury that he potentially sustained in the lead up to this fight? Now, we've seen a new look, David Hay, um, in the preparation for this rematch. So I appreciate the first rematch was called off, but we've seen a lighter David Hay. David Hay, for me, has always been the kind of fighter who is extremely explosive. I used the phrase ambush fighter early on in this video, which I think kind of 
you know, highlights it well. I think for a guy like David Hay to be at his best, he needs to be able to go outside, inside, at a rate of knots. And to do that, you need to have an immense power and explosion from your legs. And you can see David Hay generating that power from his legs in some of his previous fights. You're just wondering if the heavy set David Hay, who turned up to this Bellew fight, potentially carrying that Achilles injury, was that explosion gone? Was that ability to generate speed and power from his legs gone? And is that why we saw him so off balance, so wild, so falling in behind shots? Was it possible that David Hay was carrying such a bad injury going into the first fight that maybe he should have withdrawn, but he couldn't withdraw because of all the withdrawals he's had in his career so far to date? You know, Manuel Char, Tyson Fury, um, you know, he's got a long history of withdrawing from fights, you know. Did he have such a bad injury he was going into that fight, um, you know, carrying that and... He maybe should have withdrawn but couldn't, didn't feel he could because of all of his history. I think that's very, very possible. Now, detractors of David Hay, people who don't want to see this rematch will say, regardless, Gossip, the problem with David Hay is that he always gets injuries. And, you know, that was seen by him picking up another injury prior to the initially scheduled Tony Bellew rematch. But, whilst it is true that David Hay has a hugely checkered history with injuries, it does still leave me wondering a bit, does he have the beating of Tony Bellew? Because for me, on the balance of probability, David Hay has gone into this fight and he's gone into carrying an injury from round one. And despite Hay being at his very worst and despite Tony Bellew actually performing very, very well, Hay has still got the better of this before that injury became aggravated in round six. Maybe I'm buying into the hype Maybe I'm giving him far, far, far too much charity. But let me tell you this. If by some miracle David Hay can turn up in May injury free, and if he can turn up 10, 15 pounds lighter, I think he's an overwhelming favourite against Tony Bellew. Um, the big question is, can he turn up injury free? And that is a question that um, none of us really know the answer to. And it's a question that um, could be a deciding factor in the rematch. Looking at this tape, Am I confident that Tony Bellew will repeat his victory against David Hay? I'm not. I'm not. I think Tony Bellew uh, was fortunate how it played out on night one, uh, on fight one. And I do think it's another one of those where I'm not going to say knockouts cause amnesia, maybe, but knockouts cause you to forget certain things. And looking at the first five rounds, looking at round eight and nine, you can see that Bellew is not the picture of dominance over David Hay, generally in the course of the fight. For me, Hay went in there carrying an injury. The injury got aggravated at round six, and it was only because of that that Tony Bellew was able to establish him in the fight when he did. I don't mean to discredit Tony Bellew. I have a long and checkered past on this channel of writing Tony Bellew off, and I promise to never write him off again. He deserves immense credit. He's a guy who constantly overperforms. He can do the unthinkable and beat David Hay a second time. But in my opinion, he remains an underdog to do it. And having rewatched this fight, I am more confident that David Hay um, can beat Tony Bellew in the rematch. And I actually think the biggest risk to David Hay uh, in that fight is a reoccurrence of an Achilles injury, which is a distinct possibility, as opposed to Tony Bellew outboxing him or catching him cold. Let me know your thoughts. Leave your comments in the section below. If you've enjoyed this video, also let me know. Perhaps it's something that I can do more of we watching some other fights. Please hit the thumbs up button. Please press subscribe if you're new and haven't done so before. As always, appreciate you guys watching my channel. Thanks for tuning in.